Hello, yes, persecution, the modus operandi of the agent provocateur. That's right. Those that have been in British nationalism as long as me or even longer, Nick Griffin, Richard Edmonds, they will remember in the 70s when Martin Webster was persecuted. Remember his one-man march, his fight against red terrorism all by himself, poor me. And when he was arrested and tried, uh, one of these um, race trial cases, uh, it was in our race relations board, he was fined, he never went to jail. He was persecuted, wasn't he? Right? Do you remember that now? He was another one persecuted. And he's still a searchlight asset that works for Jerry Gable 40 years on. And you, Richard Edmonds, sharing platforms with him, you're going to be ashamed of yourself. John Tyndall is tearing his grave. But anyway, let's jump forward now to the mid late 2000s. Adam Walker. Fresh out the army, into the BMP. Unblemished record, never been in trouble in his life with the police. He joins the British National Party and he's public enemy, number one. And what for? What was his crime? Handing leaflets out. But it wasn't at all part of the scam, the act. See, by persecuting their agent, by supposedly persecuting their agent provocateur, it gives them sympathy, right? You feel sorry for them. So you like them, you support them, you trust them. Then we had Clive Jefferson, Butch Dawn, Dawn Charlton, Mike Whitby. They followed suit. They handed leaflets out and were persecuted. And then we had Peter Cheney here in Liverpool. He not only handed leaflets out and was persecuted, he was persecuted by armed police everywhere he went. Armed police were hot on his tails chasing him. And what for? For handing leaflets out. And this was their undoing with Taney. They went a bit overboard because the armed response here in Liverpool, the Matrix as it's called, it's a specialist unit. I've dealt with them on many occasions. The, um, they're a specialist unit dealing with gun crime and drug crime and serious crimes, right? So I've been stopped by them many times for some offences uh, I've been arrested for, right? Uh, everyone's all familiar with that. So I know how they operate. And they don't go round, or they don't get sent to incidents where someone's handing a leaflet out and there's been a, a complaint or something. They'd leave that to PC Plod to, to investigate that. They're a specialist unit. They don't go round enforcing bylaws or public order laws or whatever, or people handing leaflets out. And that was their undoing that. And that's how I got on, that's how I've exposed this whole lot. And it's so easy now, once you're onto it. But let's jump forward now to the biggest persecution ever. And that's Tommy Robinson. Persecuted, hounded. Right? And also, this is what else he does. He's been doing it of late. He'll make a video exposing or showing how the press lie about him. Look, watch the full unedited Evasion, and you'll see them lying about me. Now, what that does, it not only uh, gives some support and people like him, even might think he's funny. What the main thing it does is it shows he's right. That's what it does, right? Christ, they've been lying about this man, but it's all a scam, it's all part of the force. So, the modus operandi is persecution. Sadly, You've got people like Nick Griffin, Richard Edmonds, and even John Tyndall when he was alive. Still fallen for the spiel. Oh, sorry, I forgot one here. Nick Griffin's best mate now, Jack Sen. Wasn't he persecuted? Persecuted and drummed out of UKIP for speaking the truth about the Zionists or whatever. Attacking Luciana Berger and whatever. Where their loyalty lies. That was another scam where he's persecuted right gets drummed out of UKIP go over to, uh, to us Jack the BMP said right and this is what they're doing right now there's other instances in fact there's that many a, a beard all day citing them all but this is what they do right it's some sort of persecution right now Tommy Robinson epitomises the modus operandi of our enemies. 
the secret state, the security services, MI5, it's two criminal proxies, hope not, hey Nick Lowell's, Jerry Gable, Searchlight Magazine and various other Zionist entities like Ezra Levant of the uh, Rebel Media and so on. Before I, I forget to uh, say this, I see Katie Hopkins now is with the Rebel Media, right? Now, didn't she make silly statements like a final solution to the Muslim problem or something? And there's a guy in UKIP now, Gary Gary something, he said, a holocaust of our children. Now, these statements have been picked deliberately. What's very telling about Katie Hopkins is, I wonder if the police gave her a visit when she made that provocative statement after the London bridge terror attack that you know british men should get off their ass and do something about this not exactly them words but something like that and then that crank from cardiff drove down to uh, london finsbury park mosque and ran a few muslims over i wonder if she was visited by the police and say whoa you know or was she sacked from whatever job she was working at at the time i don't know but it's very telling she's now with Ezra Levin's Rebel Media and also speaking at the conference of uh, For Britain, uh, Anne-Marie Waters, another one that works for Hope Not Hate, or whoever they work for, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to split hairs or argue with anyone, whether or not it's some Zionist conspiracy emanating from Tel Aviv in Israel, or it's something just basically simple, the security services here. And it's two criminal proxies, hope not hate Nick Lowell's Jerry Gable Taylor magazine. I'm not going to split hairs or argue with the work for it. It doesn't matter. It's what they're doing that counts. So, uh, Casey Hopkins, and she's making, you know, outlandish remarks and statements, making us look stupid. And she's following the um, enter white nationalist entertainment industry, going in Muslim areas or dressing in a baker like Lauren Southern and all the rest of Achieving zilch. So, the main one they do to get support, sympathy and be liked is persecution. They pull off many other stunts as well, but that's the main one is persecution. And you, Nick Griffin, like I said in yesterday's video, you're wishing Tommy all the good luck in his forthcoming trial and all this crap. He's working against our cause for our enemies and you're wishing him uh, good luck, uh, you know, at the, uh, when he goes to court his forthcoming trial, whatever, whether or not he goes back to prison or walks out of court or whatever. You're wishing him, you know, good luck and all that, and he's working for our enemies, and I'll tell you why you're doing it. You're trying to obviously tap in, in the ma tap in on the mass support he's got on you, obviously for financial reasons, because you know quite well he's working uh, for our enemies against us and what we stand for. You know exactly that he is. Yeah, you wish him, good luck, Tommy! It, it, it doesn't make sense, does it? I bet you wish now you hadn't criticised them at all. You'd love to be on board the Tommy Robinson Roadshow with all the thousands of gullible fuckers following them. And I'm sorry, because that's what you are, right? But then in the same breath, I can understand an awful lot. They're looking for a hero. They're looking for, you know, a champion. And he's providing it for them because what you've got to remember here, look at the PR machine. Machine, not campaign, I said yesterday. Look at the PR machine behind him. It's massive. And all the press hot on his tails, and I can't compete with it. Me in my back room with my books, right? I know I can't. I know 99.99% will fall on deaf ears, but if I can reach the good astute people that, you know, we need in the movie before they get sucked into that nonsense, then it'll be worthwhile doing it. Okay, thank you.